Thank you. In the name of God, the compassionate and merciful, Mr. President, at the outset, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the Russian Federation for convening this emergency meeting. I also extend my gratitude to China and Algeria for requesting this meeting, as well as those members that supported convening of this meeting. We also thank Ms. DiCarlo for her briefing. Mr. President, distinguished member of the Council, we request this urgent meeting and attend the Council today to address a matter of the grave importance and urgency, one that threatens international peace and security and challenges the very principle upon which this esteemed body was founded. As we address in our letter today to your Mr. President, the cowardly assassination of Mr. Ismail Haniye, the political chief of the Palestinian Islamic resistance movement Hamas, and the great leader of the Palestinian people, legitimate a struggle for self-determination as the result of an aggressive act of terrorism by Zionist occupying regime of Israel. Mr. Hanye, who was in Tehran upon an official invitation of the government of the Islamic Republic of Iran to attend the inauguration ceremony of the new president of the Islamic Republic of Iran with the presence of leaders of many foreign countries, was targeted alongside his companion in his residence in Tehran today at around 2 a.m. local time. This act of terror is just another manifestation of Israelis decaying long patterns of terrorism and sabotage targeting Palestinians and other supporters and sympathizers of the Palestinian cause across the region and beyond. In addition to its terrorist objective, Israel was also pursuing political goal with this act, aiming to disrupt the first day of the new government of the Islamic Republic of Iran, which has prioritized strengthening peace and stability in the region and enhancing cooperation and constructive engagement with international community. The Islamic Republic of Iran condemn in the strongest possible terms this horrible terrorist act as a most serious violation of international law and the charter of the United Nations as well as a grave breach of Iran's sovereignty and national security. This aggressive act of terrorism, as provocative as it is, constitutes a serious breach of peace and security and requires immediate and effective action by the UN Security Council in the discharge of its responsibility under the Charter. This crime is not isolated but part of a broader pattern of aggressive actions and policies by Israeli regime against other nations in the region. Just hour before this heinous crime, this regime carried out covertly terrorist attack in the southern suburbs of Beirut, Lebanon, targeting civilians and civilian infrastructures. The war mongering Leaders of this rough regime have shown complete disregard for the basic norms and principles of international law. Their crimes reveal a lack of commitment to peace and stability in the region and suggest an intention to escalate conflict and expand the war through the entire region. The responsibility of the United States as a strategic ally and main supporters of the Israeli regime in the region cannot be overlooked in this horrific crime. This act could not be occurred without the authorization and intelligence support of the US. The continuation of Israel's aggression threatened peace and stability in the region. The international community, particularly the United Nations Security Council, cannot remain indifferent to such heinous crimes and must take decisive action to address this violation and hold the perpetrators accountable. Mr. President, persistent and systematic attack on Palestinian civilians in Gaza, characterized by disappropriation, use of the force and discriminate targeting 
have resulted in tragic loss of life, widespread destruction, and depending humanitarian and depending depending humanitarian crisis. These action, which frequently target civilian infrastructure, residential area, and medical facilities, not only violate international humanitarian law, but also constitute war crimes under the Geneva Conventions. Unfortunately, the inaction and inability of the Security Council have emboldened this occurrence regime, allowing it to continue committing war crimes against the oppressed people of Palestine and acts of aggression against other nations of the region. The Islamic Republic of Iran has repeatedly warned of the serious repercussions that the malicious activities of Israeli occupying regime pose to regional and international peace and security. Despite these provocations, Iran has consistently exercised maximum restraint. Following the Israeli regime covertly terrorist and armed attack on our diplomatic premises on Damascus, Syria on 1st April, we promptly notified the UN Security Council and Secretary General of the Israeli International Wrongful Act and called on the Security Council to denounce this unjustified criminal and terrorist act decisively and to take appropriate measures to prevent the recurrence of such crimes and aggressions. Regrettably, the Security Council has failed in this in its duty to maintain international peace and security, and a draft press statement proposed by Russia in condemning the Israeli atrocious act was blocked by the United States, United Kingdom, and France. Yet, it is now imperative that the occupying regime be held fully accountable for its atrocities. This regime must not be allowed to evade responsibilities for its violation and consequences that follow. Mr. President, distinguished member of the Council, for nearly 10 months, certain countries, particularly the United States, have shielded Israel from any responsibilities for the massacre in Gaza and malicious activities in the region. These countries have not only denied the inherent right of Palestinian resistance group to self-defense against Israeli atrocities, but have also shamelessly justified the Israeli massacre and genocide against defenseless Palestinian people under the pretext of self-defense for Israel. The U.S. and its allies have made cynical attempts to justify and cover up the atrocities committed by the Israeli regime against the people of Palestine through arbitrary and misleading interpretation of the concept of self-defense. Regrettably, the United States has once again chosen to turn a blind eye to reality and overlook the root causes of the current situation. The Palestinian resistance group, like Hamas and other resistance groups in the region, are not terrorists. They are legitimate group under international law and were established to fight against occupation and aggression. Mr. President, the, Secretary, the Security Council must unequivocally condemn Israel for its horrible terrorist act as a most serious violation of international law and the Charter of the United Nations as well as a grave breach of Iran's sovereignty and national security. This condemnation should be strong and clear and reflect the international community's rejection of such violation of sovereignty and territorial integrity. Furthermore, the Security Council should take immediate step to hold Israel accountable for this act of aggression. This includes considering the imposition of sanctions and other measures that are necessary to prevent further violation and to signal that the Israeli malevolent activities will not be tolerated by the international community. The Council must also demand that the Israeli immediately cease all aggressive actions against the 
Palestinian territories and other nations in the region. This demand should be accompanied by the call for ending the occupation of the Palestine territories, the territory of Lebanon and the Syrian occupied Golan, in accordance with the international law and the principles of the United Nations. And finally, the Islamic Republic of Iran reserves its inherent right to self-defense in accordance with international law to respond decisively to these terrorist and criminal act when it deems necessary and appropriate. The Islamic Republic of Iran reaffirms its commitment to upholding international law and the purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter. We believe that peace and stability in the region can only be achieved through respect for these principles. I thank you. I thank the Islamic Republic of Iran for your statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of the State of Palestine, Observer State of Palestine. Mr. President, I thank you for your swift response to Algeria and China's request to convene this emergency meeting to address the further grave developments regarding the Palestine question and the broader situation in the Middle East. We recognize that this meeting takes place on the last day of the presidency of the Russian Federation and renew appreciation for your skilled leadership of the council in these critical times. We also thank Under Secretary General Di Carlo for her briefing. Mr. President, it has been nearly 300 days since Israel launched its genocidal war on the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip a war that has gravely breached all tenets of international humanitarian and human rights law, a war that has flagrantly violated the UN Charter, including the cardinal principle regarding the sovereignty and territorial integrity of states, a war that threatens international peace and security. Yet Israel is being permitted to wage this war in broad daylight with no restraints and no consequences. It is doing so willfully and wantonly, in spite of this Security Council's resolutions, in spite of the ICJ Provisional Measures orders, in spite of the global demands for a ceasefire. And still, the Council is failing its duty to impose a ceasefire and bring a halt to this depravity. Every day brings more horror loss and suffering for our people as Israeli occupying forces massacre Palestinian civilians, assassinate officials, kill humanitarian workers, medical personnel and journalists, abduct civilians and torture and rape them in Israeli jails, bomb and destroy Palestinian homes and infrastructure, and attack UN premises, including UNRWA schools sheltering millions of forcibly displaced civilians who are being deliberately starved and denied access to medical care and the most basic needs for human subsistence and dignity by an occupier mercilessly chasing and hunting them down, repeatedly displacing them as they desperately search for safety in a place where no one and nowhere is safe. It is not only a catastrophic humanitarian crisis. It is an existential crisis. And today, yet another Palestinian official has been assassinated by Israel. As pronounced by Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian leadership condemns in the strongest terms the assassination of former Palestinian Prime Minister and head of the political bureau of Hamas, Ismail Haniyeh, in Tehran today. A national day of mourning has been declared in Palestine, and we solemnly acknowledge the expressions of condolence and the global condemnations of this act of terror. Moreover, we unequivocally condemn the criminal breach of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of the Islamic Republic of Iran, as we condemn the repeated breaches by Israel of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Lebanon, the Syrian Arab Republic, and Yemen, 
and this includes yesterday's brazen attack on Beirut. We call again with utmost urgency on the Security Council, the General Assembly, and all law-abiding, peace-loving nations to act forthwith to bring a halt to these horrific criminal Israeli aggressions against the Palestinian people and on our region. We demand accountability for this assassination as we have continually demanded accountability for the wanton murder and injury of over 130,000 Palestinian children, women, and men across these past 300 days of horror and hell in Gaza and call for accountability for all of Israel's criminal policies and practices in our territory across the decades. Likewise, we reiterate our calls for accountability for all of Israel's breaches of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of states in the region, including the state of Palestine. The UN Charter must be upheld, not solely in words, but also in deeds. The failure to hold Israel accountable has permitted and enabled these crimes and further emboldened Israeli government officials, military commanders, and settler extremists to escalate their reign of terror against defenseless Palestinian civilians all across the territory of the state of Palestine, in the Gaza Strip and in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, as well as across the region. Mr. President, violence and terror are clearly Israel's main and only currency. Not international law, not diplomacy, not mediation, not respect for human life. There is no red line for Israel, no law it will not breach, no norm it will not trample, no act too depraved or barbaric for its occupying army and settler militias, and no child, woman, or man off limits even babies considered legitimate targets. The Israeli Prime Minister and his coalition of government extremists and military commanders believe there will never be a cost for their crimes. They believe they can literally get away with murder, get away with genocide against the Palestinian people. They believe it because it has been possible until now. No resolution no ICJ order, no ceasefire calls have been respected, no demand for protection of civilians and humanitarian access has been heeded, and still no consequences whatsoever for Israel. This has gone on even as the Palestinian people have tragically live-streamed the genocide for all the world to see, believing that somehow the world would act to save the over two million human lives endangered in Gaza. Every plea for help, including in this council, has been made in the belief that the world would act in respect of the rule of law, our shared moral obligations, and our collective humanity. Yet this gruesome aggression continues, surpassing 40,000 Palestinians killed, the majority women and children, over 91,000 injured in attacks by Israeli occupying forces, nearly the entirety of Gaza's population uprooted, and the decimation of the Gaza Strip and trauma of the entire population. At the same time, in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, Israeli occupying forces and settler terrorists continue their violent raids killing at least 569 Palestinians, including children. And Israel's illegal colonial settlement campaign not only continues as we speak, but is intensifying as it feverishly pursues its vowed annexationist aims, seeking to forever obstruct the Palestinian people's right to self-determination and independence and to destroy the two-state solution. Mr. President, members of the Council, until when? Absent any form of accountability, any serious mobilization and sanctions, including a halt to arms transfers, to pressure an end to these crimes, Israel is proving every single day that it will continue to act as a rogue state. The assassination today and all the crimes preceding it and that have followed it in the ensuing hours 
prove this beyond the shadow of a doubt. Israel openly declares its intentions to carry on, defying the Council and the international community as a whole, brazenly carrying on with its scorched earth killing and destruction spree in Gaza, vowing to further entrench its colonial annexationist occupation and its racist, discriminatory, hateful policies against the Palestinian people and recklessly escalating tensions. It is blatantly attempting to destabilize the entire region and provoke an all-out war in the Middle East with dangerous repercussions, not only for the region, but far beyond. The international community must confront this reality and act to stop these crimes and aggressions. There is no right that Israel can claim to justify these war crimes and crimes against humanity. The right to peace and security is the right of all states in the region and in every region of the world. It is not an exclusive right of Israel. Moreover, it is a fact that Israel is an illegal occupant in the state of Palestine and possesses no rights whatsoever in our territory and over our people. This was unequivocally determined by the ICJ in the seminal advisory opinion it rendered just days ago on the 19th of July. This ruling must be respected and enforced. Israel has no sovereignty rights and no right to self-defense in a territory in which it is illegally present in grave breach of every rule of international law. This illegal occupation in all of its manifestations must come to an end and the Palestinian people must be free. Mr. President, Israel has been the oppressor, tormentor and murderer of Palestinians for decades and it is the long-standing destabilizer of our region. It must be stopped. The obligations of the Security Council and General Assembly, the obligations of all states, including the high contracting parties to the Fourth Geneva Convention, are to act forthwith to bring an end to this unlawful, abhorrent situation. The lives of millions of civilians are at stake in Gaza and the rest of occupied Palestine and throughout the region. We appeal to the international community to act immediately. First and foremost, this Security Council, as per its charter duty, to maintain international peace and security. It must act to protect the Palestinian people and to prevent a regional war against it at this moment of clear and present danger. The international community has a choice to make. Let it be for peace and security. Do not let Israel drag us all to the abyss. I thank you, Mr. President, and esteemed members of the Council for your attention. And on behalf of the state of Palestine and her people, implore you to act. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.